Okay, so once there is no question, it means we you all understood how we obtained the equations of motion. And so I can go on. Okay, so I want one of you to help me. Um, I'll go to Julian now say, Julian now say, what is the first equation of motion? Equation one. Julie, I've called you. Leona, let me <laughs> let me pick information from Juliana. Juliana, are you there? <laughs> okay, Leonard, go ahead. What's the first equation? V is equal to u plus at. So the first equation is v is equal to um <laughs> u plus. Hey, let me mute all. So that if you want to talk, you come in. The feedback I'm getting can feed all. <laughs> okay, so V is equal to U plus A T. Where where V is equal to yes. Please do not raise raise your hands up. Just quickly go ahead and then share what you think with us. Well, V is equal to final velocity. This is final velocity. U initial velocity. Initial velocity. Initial velocity. A acceleration. Acceleration. And T so it's all time taking. Okay, time so taking. time taking or time. Then equation two. What's the second equation of motion? Okay, Leonard. I'm sure Leonard is a professor of motion. So, Leonard, <laughs> what's the second equation? Okay, anybody else? Anybody else to share what you think with us? Laura, uh -huh. oh, second. Uh -huh. S is equal to U. S is equal to U. T. U T plus, plus. Plus A T squared over 2. Or half A T squared. Okay. In fact, you are not wrong for saying A T squared over 2. is the same thing. Right? Yes. So, where S is equal to speed distance s is the distance please is not speed okay usually speed we use v or u so this is distance or displacement distance or displacement then the rest U, A, and T, we have defined them. So we are not going to waste time with U, blah, blah. We have talked about that here. And then the third equation. Third equation. Yes. B squared. B squared. B squared is equal to. U squared plus 2A N. Good. All right. And we have defined all the variables, all the letters. Now, I told you that in equations of motion, 
you must understand that that it, it, it these equations works on they works on the condition that motion the motion must be motion of the body or motion of particle must be uniformly must be uniformly accelerated so it works on the the condition of uniformly accelerated motion meaning if the motion is not uniformly accelerated you can't use the three equations to solve them so at this level of yours, the linear motion we look at is uniformly accelerated motion. Then in solving equations of motion, you must pay attention to statements like body starts from rest. comes to rest comes to a stop body starts from rest means that the initial velocity of the body is equal to zero body comes to a stop means that the final velocity of the body is zero body comes to comes to rest or comes to stop also means that V is equal to zero. And so these are the key stops or phrases you must understand in uniformly accelerated motion. Then, and uh, <clears throat> equations of motion, don't forget, all, um, and uh, graphs of motion we came to the realization that the slope either the slope or gradient of of one displacement or distant time graph is equal to the what? What is the slope of um, a distance time graph or displacement time graph? <clears throat> this is equal to, yes, Laura, go ahead. The velocity. So this is either the speed or velocity. If it's about distance, time graph, the slope is P. If it's about displacement time graph, the slope is velocity. Don't forget, by magnitude, they are the same. They only differ a little bit in direction. <clears throat> now, if I have two, if I have two different velocity time graph, sorry, distance time graph. This is another one. Distance time graph. Let's assume this motion starts from rest. I have this. And then I have this. So A and B. Which of these two has a greater velocity. 
which of these two motions has a greater velocity? Yes. Which of these two has a greater velocity? Nana Kwame. If um, Nana, come, come again. A B. Why? Nana, why? Which of these two has a greater velocity? He said B. Why? Um, since it's yeah. like the... Mm -hmm. Nana, try. Yes, if, you, if any of you has a different opinion, you can share with us. Yes, Nana, you are right. B is correct. But why? Now, why is very, very important. Why? Because the distance, is, it covers much more distance. Uh, okay. All right. Uh -huh. Au revoir. Nana, well taken. Au revoir, what do you also think? Uh, please, because it covers more a greater displacement compared to that time. It's true. It's true. So this is what they are saying. If, if the vertical values okay, are the same, then what they are saying is that this is covering more uh, a lesser distance within a greater time. So when you take the ratio of distance time, you have a smaller value. This is also covering a larger distance or a greater distance within either a shorter time or even the same time. And so when you take the ratio, this will give you a larger value, which is true. The other point to look at is that, in fact, the steepness, of the slope, okay, informs the magnitude of the speed or velocity. How steep the slope is. Look at these two. If these two are mountains or hills and you are asked to climb, which of them will it be so difficult? Will it be A or B? Which of these two mountains will it be difficult to climb? B. 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 And so how it is slanted is the steepiness or slopiness. The greater the slope, the greater is the velocity or the speed. Is that okay? So when I'm giving the question and there are no values to calculate the slope, I'll have to look at how steep the slope is. If this is less steep, like this, and the other one is like this, then clearly it means this one has a greater um, slope and so speed. Or when you draw an angle, you realize that this angle is greater than this one, and so the velocity or the speed will be greater. So if there are no values, that is how to use you use the steepness to judge the ma magnitude of the speed or the velocity. Class, is that okay? Yes, yes sir. But yes. when there are values, calculate. The same thing applies also applies to a velocity time graph. The slope, a refer, the slope of a velocity time graph would is equal to the what? Acceleration. Acceleration. So the steepness of the slope also tells the magnitude of the acceleration. Are you okay? Angel or Sewusu, are you around? Angel. 
Hey, Angel is in here. Okay. I'm here. Uh -huh. You must be here. <laughs> I sent you, I sent a question, a trial question yesterday night onto the platform. Today we are going to look at how to use the equations of motion and then the graph. Graph of motion to solve problem. Then we continue. But let's look at that question I sent to the platform last night. Yes, yeah, some of you sent your solution to me. Others got it right. Others also dropped. <laughs> and so let's... Um, Leonard. Sir, please ask whether you pick the question online. Oh, no. In fact, I have a lot of books. So I, I, mm -hmm. I saw the same question on Google. Ah, uh, then Google copied it from me. <laughs> Maybe they also picked it from the same book. Okay, so a train moves from one station to another station. A train moves from one station to another station in two hours time. Mm, okay. Its speed uh, uh, during the motion is shown on a graph. Calculate I, the maximum acceleration during the journey. Then I, I, the distance, the distance covered during the time interval from 0 0.75 hours to one hour. So let me give you a quick sketch of the motion or of the graph. If you haven't muted, mute yourself. It's a speed. There's a speed. The unit kilometer per hour. Then the time is in hours. So twenty forty and sixty. This is zero point two hours. 0.5. This is 0 0.75. This is one. And drew down to two. Five at five, 0 0.5 hours. The speed of the train. So from, it starts from rest. The motion starts from rest. Then from 0 0.5 to 0 0.7, what happened to the speed? I have from 0 0.5 to 0 0.7, the speed we have we have flat or zero gradient. So what happens to the speed? Yes. Oh, zero gradient. So what happens to the speed? Hey class, you are to answer. From 0 0.5 to 0 0.7, zero, the gradient is zero. What happens to the speed?
Hey, everybody is asleep. The speed is constant. Uh -huh. The speed is constant. The speed is constant. Then, from one to two hours, what happens? What happens to the speed? From one so what happens, so what happens to the speed decrease it decreasing yes so deceleration has to do with decreasing speed thank you so the first question is demanding that So, Leona, did you then copy your answer from the source? <laughs> eh? Leonard. <laughs> Once you are sending me the solution, then it implies that you copy your answer from the source. Okay, so I calculate the maximum acceleration during the journey. Okay, maximum acceleration. You see, here there is a adjective that the maximum acceleration. This is because we have different accelerations within. We have two positive accelerations and we have one, one negative acceleration and we have a zero acceleration. So we are to determine the maximum one. So let's calculate for the positive accelerations. When we look at from zero to 0 0.5, the body accelerated uniformly. So let's determine the magnitude of this acceleration. Okay, acceleration from a uh, speed time graph is equal to the slope. So the slope, let's assume this is O, A, B, C, D. This is E, F, and then lastly, J. Class, are you all there? Are you there? The, the, platform, the platform is super quiet. <laughs> so what do you consider, considering triangle O, A, B, the slope of this triangle, which is equal to the acceleration is the change in the vertical, 20 minus zero, divided by the change in the horizontal, 0 0.5 minus zero. So this is 20 over 0 0.5, which is equal to 40. Half is one over two. So 20 times two, 40 kilometer, per hour squared. Please, here, nobody has asked that convert. So do not worry yourself in converting from kilometer per hour to meter per second squared. It's a waste of pen and energy, okay? So this is the slope AB, sorry, OA. Let's look for the other slope and compare. Then we can find the maximum acceleration. Come again, yeah. Please go over the slope O A B part. Uh, yeah, the the slope of a speed time graph is equal to the acceleration. So if if I determine a slope. I have determined the acceleration. Okay, 
Why we have this is zero slope. This is a positive slope. This is also a positive. So we are looking at them one after the other. This does it for OA. We'll look at it for CD. Okay. Then look at it for maybe DG. We are learning. So we can actually surf around. So the slope of OA is equal to the change in the vertical. Delta V over delta T. So this change, and the change is always, let me clear the side and then. So the slope, OA, is equal to change in the vertical over the change in the horizontal. And the change, we are always looking at the maximum minus the minimum. The minimum is zero. Maximum is 20. So 20 minus zero. Then the change in the horizontal. The maximum, which is 0 0.5, minus the minimum, which is zero. So when you subtract, you have 20 divided by 0 0.5, which is equal to 40. Yeah, are you OK? Yes. So let's also look. After, this is AC has zero slope. We wouldn't worry ourselves. Let's look at slope of CD. The same method. Change in the vertical, which is this. Delta V over the change in the horizontal. So what is the change? In the vertical, the maximum value is 60. The minimum value is 20. So 60 minus 20 divided by the maximum value 1 or 1 1.0 minus the minimum value, which is um, 0 0.75. So this is. 40 divided by 0 0.25. If 0 0.25 is 1 over 4. So it's 1 over 4, 40 over 1 times 4, which is 160 kilometer per hour squared. This will give us a negative slope, so we wouldn't worry ourselves with it. We are we are looking at maximum, and maximum would always be a positive. If you have negatives competing with positives, then of course for maximum the positive would win. Okay, so you compare the two uh, accelerations and decide which one is maximum. So clearly, the maximum acceleration is one hundred and sixty kilometer per hour square. Plus, are we okay? Are we okay? Yes. So therefore, maximum acceleration is 160 kilometer per hour square. Then the second question also demands that we calculate for the distance. Let me retrieve the. So calculate the distance covered during the time interval from a river. Mr. Edia, please, can you come again at the slope from the 60 minus 20 part? OK, so. We are looking at this slope. We've compared this, OK? And then we are now looking at this one, positive slope. And the slope is always, when it is, it is this slope, look at the length of the slope, starting from here. So the change in the vertical from the maximum point to the minimum point, which is C, this is it for delta V, the change in the velocity. 
V. And then the change in the horizontal, that's minimum time, and then the maximum time to this, which is one. So if you are looking for the slope, it is always, this is similar to what you've been doing in mathematics, gradients. Change in Y over change in X. Okay, over here, the vertical is my Y. But here, the graph, the axis is labeled, is velocity or speed. So delta Y changes to be V. And then the horizontal is, is not also X as it, but time axis. So delta T, but it's similar to what you've been doing in math. Okay, With, this is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So it's the same thing, okay? Here, Y2 represents the maximum velocity, which is 60. So delta V on delta T, the maximum y or velocity is 60 minus the minimum velocity 20 over your change in x that by this time is t maximum t which is one minus minimum t which is 0 0.75 yeah are you okay Yeah, are you fine? You said, yeah, please, it was fine. Are you okay? Yes, please. Okay. So the maximum distance traveled from the time of 0 0.75 to 1. Okay. The maximum distance, the total, uh, the distance covered during time interval from 0 0.75 to 1 hour, okay? The distance covered from 0 0.75, 0 0.75 to 1. So we are looking for the distance covered during this interval. And it is for a speed time graph or velocity time graph, the area under the the motion or the graph and the time axis is equal to the total distance. For a speed time graph or velocity time graph, the area under the graph and then the time axis is equal to the total distance. But over here, we are only given a section of the time. So we are looking at that between 0 0.75 and then one. So this area between the, the graph and then the time axis, this area would give us a total distance. Is that okay? So the area under the graph and then the time axis gives us the total distance traveled. Please, are you okay? Yes, please. Yes, please. So let's find the area involved here. This is uh, um, the shape of a trapezium. So the total distance, total distance covered is equal to the area of the trapezium. And the area of a trapezium is half A plus B times H. Okay. A is the shortest side, the smaller side A. The longer side is B. So from one to the point D. So this is A. And this whole side is B. Then the H is that vertical height perpendicular to both A and B. And it is this line. This line is perpendicular to A and also perpendicular to B. Therefore, 
half A. What's the value of A? 20. Okay. 20. Then B. B is this whole line. 60. H. H is the difference between the time stated. So 1 minus 0 0.75, which is 0 0.25. Okay. And this is also the same as 0 0.25 is the same as 1 over 4. So I have 80 divided by 8. 2 plus 60 divided 2 times 80 divided by 8. And this is 10. I haven't changed the unit. And since this is about distance, 10 kilometer or 10 kilometer is about distance. So 10 kilometer or if you want to express it in meter, you can, but not necessary. So 10,000 meter as a, the total distance travel. Are we okay? No. Mm -hmm. What's the problem? Please, um, it's about the distance. Uh, you see, the distance under uh, for a velocity time graph or distance time graph, the area under the graph and then the time axis is equal to the distance traveled. Okay, look at the time given to us is between 0 0.75 and 1. So there's a time. So the area above, this is the motion within that time interval. This is the this is a graph of motion within the time given 0 0.75 and 1. So this whole area under the graph, okay, or between the graph and then the time axis is equal to the total distance traveled. Call it. Call it, come in. Oh, Caleb, you have raised your hand. Go ahead. All right. Okay, quickly, I'm going to send you another similar question. Let's see how you can apply. Okay. Another similar question. I want to see how you can apply whatever we've done so far to solving that. And I'm going to send it into the group. I'm coming. Okay, so I'm just loading the question into the group. Hey, what's the delay? Okay, so I've just pushed the question into the group. Then the, the graph, I'll send the graph and then the, the questions that also follow. All right, so class, I'm giving you, um, I'm giving you 10 minutes. Let's see what you can 
do within the 10 minutes and I'll come back to you. Roy, I'll, listen, I'll send it to you. So start work. Time is 1.42. So at as early 1.52, I'm coming your way. Yes, and I've, I've sent it to you personally. Please, let's, I mean, make use of the time well. So the graph below represents the relationship coming. The relationship between Velocity and time for an object in motion. Okay. So it is similar to this one. It is similar to this one. It's a velocity time graph. We have sections of the motion. Now, A, what is the acceleration of the object? During the time interval, t is equal to 3 to t is equal to 5. B, what is the average speed of the object during, during the time interval, t is equal to 6 seconds to, a, to t is equal to 8 seconds? Then C, what is the total distance traveled during the, the first three minutes, seconds? Then D, during which interval is the object acceleration the greatest? Here, you are given possible answers. Then E, during the time interval t is equal to eight seconds with T is equal to 10 seconds. The speed of the object is I0. And then I I true to IV. So please make me proud. Is I supposed to do it and send it to you or you ask no, us a question? You, you will mark yourselves. We'll, after we will discuss and then you will mark yourselves. Right. Okay. So let's, let's start looking at it. But were you able to finish class? Were you able to finish? No, please. Hey. No, please. Okay, you mark yourself and then score. So question one, um, A. What is the acceleration of the object during the time interval t is equal to 3 to t is equal to 5? So during the time interval t is equal to 3 to t is equal to 5, what is the acceleration? Yes. Angel, what did you get for A? The acceleration during the time interval t is equal to 3 to 5. Because of Netflix, I can't see my Okay. Um, Laura, what do you get for the acceleration um, between so these? Mm -hmm. Seven point five inches per second square. Okay. Let's see. Laura said she had. She's saying that she had seven point five. Let's see. So. Between acceleration, okay, between the time interval, this and this will be equal to the slope CD. 
So the slope CD would be equal to the change in the vertical, which there's a change in the vertical. Yeah, we are applying the same thing here too. 25 minus 10. 25 minus 10 divided by the change in the horizontal, which is 5 minus 3. So 15 divided by 2, aka 7.5 meter per second squared. So start marking yourself. A must be 7.5 meter per second squared. If your time, if your unit is omitted, mark yourself half. <laughs> it's a flat half. B. What is the average speed of the object during the time interval t is equal to 6 to t is equal to 8? What is the average speed? Average speed under a velocity time graph. Now, now, Kwame, what did you get for this? Average speed between t is equal to 6 and t is equal to 8. Hey, now Kwame is not there. Dela? Dela, are you there? Yes. What did you get for? For this, I thought it was equal to the acceleration, so I did negative seven point five meter per second squared. Oh no! The average speed between the time interval t is equal to six and t is equal to eight. Okay, let's see. So an average speed, okay, and the velocity time graph. Uh, is equal to u initial speed plus final speed all divided by two. This is one way of, okay, okay, Laura. Okay, so this is one way of determining it. So what is the starting initial speed here? The body is decelerating uniformly between six and eight. So initial speed 25, then final speed 10 divided by 2. So we have 35 on 2, which is 17.5 meter per second. One way of determining this. Another way of determining average speed. Yeah, Juliana. Sir, please, um, my sir, please, my average speed is equal to total distance over total time. That that's what we are coming to look at. Okay, the plan B. Yes, please. Yes, okay. please. The same average speed. is also equal to. As uh, Juliana said, total distance divided by total time taken. It means we need to determine the total distance between the time interval six to eight. And and the velocity time graph, the area under the graph is equal to the total distance. So the area between the motion and then the time axis from six to eight. And this is a trapezium. So area of a trapezium 
half a plus b times h, which is equal to the distance covered. What is a? A is this shorter side, a. B is from this point to this point. So A is equal to 10 plus B is 25 times 2. The perpendicular height is 2. This and this cancels out. So we have total distance to be 35 divided by the total time taken. The total time taken is between 6 to 8, so 2. So the value is the same. So whichever way you look at it, the same value. Nana Kwame. Please. Yes, How did you get the height? That, you see, I'm, I'm confused. This is, this is A. Okay, the two parallel sides, the two parallel sides of the um of the trapezium. This is A. This longer side is B. These two sides are parallel, isn't it? And how come, isn't it? Yes, sir. Then, then you look at the line which is perpendicular to the two of them. The line, a line drawn from both, okay, both lines, which will be perpendicular to both. So when I draw okay. the line from this point to this point, this side will be, this line will be perpendicular to A and will also be perpendicular to B. That is the height H. Now, are you okay? okay? Yes, sir. All right. Hey, I hope you are getting it correct. <laughs> correct. <laughs> you are to mark. I hope you are getting it. <laughs> anyway, once you are quiet, maybe it means otherwise. <laughs> See. <Sir>. See. <laughs> Sir. Sir, please. Mm -hmm. If you want to ask a question, go ahead. Sir, please. When the two cancel the other two, why did you mm. say I'm 35? Rather, it became 17.5. No, look, look at it here. For for distance, total distance. You see, I'm looking for total distance divided by total time. And for total distance, I use the trapezium method. So the two cancels and I have 35. Meaning the total distance covered is 35 meter. This divided by the total time taken. What's the total time taken for this distance? Between two. six and eight. So two divided by two. Are you okay? Yes. Okay. Then C. What is the total distance traveled during the first three seconds? Yes. Let me see what you got for this. What's the total distance traveled during the first three seconds? Colette, are you there? Let me call names. Let me call names. Eva, you are here. Elizabeth, you are here, Della. And Della has contributed. do do Michael. Irene, Hilda. Oh, a lot of you are hiding on the hills. Frida, we are... Danyaku, you are, I'm sure don't, you are not uh, sleeping. <laughs> Joe, Joe, uh -huh. what's the total distance between zero to three? What did you get? Mm -hmm. He said 25 meters. <laughs> Joe, Joe, is that your voice? <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, <laughs> what a wow. Okay. Let's see. Joe, Joe, Joe had 25. Let's see if he's correct. Eva, what did you also get? 
if uh, okay so we are looking at between zero to three so the area under okay under the graph between this time interval must give us the distance travel this is a trapezium so half a a is 2 b b is 3 the height is 10 so we are half times 5 times 10 so 25 yes so do do is correct the total distance traveled between 0 to 3 seconds 25 seconds then during which interval is the object acceleration the greatest? Frida, during which interval is the object acceleration the greatest? Is it A, B, C, D, D, E, or E, F? Frida. Paulette, are you there? Hey, Dela. Dela. Okay, Frida, go ahead. Pardon? CD. CD. How, how, how do you know? Frida, how do you know it's CD, not AB, and not DE, and not EF? Frida, ex uh, tell us why. Because the acceleration is positive. Uh -huh. Because the acceleration is positive. Hey, but Frida, this is CD is positive, and then AB is also positive. So how then do you come to the realization that this is the greatest? It is uh -huh. the longest. Yeah. OK, yeah, actually, yeah, I want to speak. Yeah, go ahead. B has the highest acceleration because the point C, the velocity was twenty five, mm -hmm. and this, and it was maintained until the E. So D E is constant velocity. Constant. As, okay. Yes, constant velocity. So it's twenty five. So, okay. Okay. Somebody is. Telling me that it is um the steeper. Yes. But you see, that observation is right. But then when you have values, please use the values to calculate. Sometimes just looking at it and then coming to the conclusion that one is steeper than the other can floor you. So when there are values, well. Okay, numbered, calculate, and do not use how it looks. Sometimes it can deceive you. Is that okay? So just as um, yeah, is saying, calculate. You see, when you determine this slope, which is equal to the acceleration for CD, I think we've even that, done that. We had um, for CD, we had 7.5. We had 7.5. For CD. Then come to AB. Calculate the slope for AB. AB, we have 10 minus 0 over 1. And this is equal to 10 meter per second squared. You see it? So it means that when you compare AB 
has a greater acceleration than CD. Even though on the face value, you may think this is steeper than this one. But when you calculate, it is deceiving you. Please, are you okay? Class, are you fine? Yes, please. So yes. when, there, when there, there are values, yes. do not use visual judgments. Calculate. Yes, I can see two hands raised. Ask your question quickly. Yeah, please, I can't see the C. The what? The C. This is C. The point C. C D. So Sir. determine this. Mm -hmm. Sir, the question C. Question. Question. Let me. Oh, but it's on the platform. The question C is saying that what is the total distance? Travel during the first three seconds. Okay, and we've just answered the D question. Let's move on to E. During the interval T is equal to eight seconds to 10 seconds, T is equal to eight seconds to 10 seconds, the speed of the object is I, zero. I, I increasing, I, I, I decreasing, and then I, V, constant but not zero, which is which? During the interval T is equal to eight to 10, the speed of the, of the object is, uh -huh, what is, what is it? What is the answer? Okay, well, who I've gotten you. Yes, E. E. Juliana. Juliana, what is happening? During T is equal to A. Please decrease. The speed is decreasing. This is a uniform deceleration between 8 and 10. And so the speed is decreasing. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, your hand is okay. So this is a typical graph question. Very, very, very simple. Okay. I'll send you a, a bit, a bit, um, a question whose, <laughs> that seems to be a bit difficult than this to see how you can think critically and answer. Is that okay? In the meantime, put this question. I'm going to give you a question. Put it down. The answer for D. Somebody is asking of the answer for D. D is A, B. Yes, D is A, B. So let me see. Um, if, you, if you got everything correct, let me hear your voice. <laughs> Please, I got everything correct. Hmm. Elizabeth, you said you got everything correct? Yes, please. Hey, what a wow. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Who else got one wrong? I got one wrong. Okay, Laura got one wrong. Mm -hmm. Two wrongs. Me too. Please, I got oh. one wrong. Okay. One wrong. The Okay, so what was E? E, e is decreasing. Nana Kwame, E is decreasing. Okay, I think you've, you've all done well. Pay attention and then put the question down. I'm going to read it. Are we supposed to solve it and send it to you? We we will after giving it to you, I'll give you I'll give you instruction on what to do. Okay. Just put the question down. Are you ready? Class, yes, are you please. ready? Okay. A motorist. Yes, what? A motorist. A motorist. Okay. 
A motorist travels with an initial velocity of five meter per second. A motorist travels with an initial velocity of five meter per second for two seconds. And then, and then accelerate uniformly, and then accelerate uniformly at 10 meter per second squared. Accelerate uniformly at 10 meter per second squared for six seconds. For six seconds. Full stop. For a further four seconds, for a further four seconds, the motorist uniformly returns to rest. For a further four seconds, the motorist uniformly returns to rest. With the aid of a velocity time graph, with the aid of a velocity time graph, calculate I. The maximum velocity attained. The maximum velocity attained. I, I. The total distance traveled. The total distance traveled. And then finally, I, I, I. The average velocity of the motorist. The average velocity of the motorist. So a motorist travels with an initial velocity of five meter per second for two seconds. And then accelerates uniformly at 10 meter per second squared for six seconds. For a further four seconds, for a further four seconds, the motorist uniformly retards to rest. With the aid of a velocity time graph, calculate I, the maximum velocity attained. I, I, the total distance traveled. I, 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 the average velocity of the motorist. So I want you to first picture and then sketch the velocity time graph for the motion. Mm -hmm. This question, we are going to use both velocity time graph and then equations of motion to solve, okay? So let me first get a picture of the velocity time graph. You, you sketch it, we'll go through it together to see how, if you happen to make any mistake, how it can be corrected, right? Thank 
Okay, so let's look at it. So a motorist travels with an initial velocity of four uh, five meter per second. So this time the motion never starts from rest. The initial velocity is five meter per second. That's the body's initial velocity. And this... Leonard, mute yourself. Leonard, Aqua. So, he traveled at this velocity for two seconds. And then... And then accelerate uniformly at... So... A motorist travels with an initial velocity of five meter per second for two seconds. Okay. And then decelerates, accelerate uniformly for um, 10 meter per second squared for six seconds. Are we okay? Now, for further four seconds, the motorist uniformly returns to rest. Now, with the aid of a velocity time graph, calculate the maximum velocity. So, U is 5 meter per second for a time of 2 seconds. Then from there, the body accelerates. The motorist accelerates. So the acceleration during the second part of the motion is 10 meter per second squared for six seconds, a time of six seconds. Then for a further four seconds, the motorist uniformly retires to rest. So, if he uniformly retires to rest, then it means the motorist's final velocity is zero. Okay. Then, for a time of t is equal to four. All right. So the motion was in three parts. The first part, the second part of the motion, and then the third part of the motion. All right. 
Let's pick the first part. A motorist starts with an initial velocity of this, okay, for two seconds. Now, the issue is that we are not told that this motion is uniform. We were not told that the motion is uniform. Okay. If the motion is not uniform, then what is the acceleration? What is the what is the final velocity? A motorist travels with an initial velocity of five meters per for two seconds and then accelerates uniformly at 10 meters per second squared for six seconds. For a further four seconds, the motorist uniformly retires to rain with the aid of a velocity time graph. Calculate the maximum velocity attained, the total distance traveled, and then the average velocity. Okay. So we are to plot a velocity time graph. All right. But the point is that we were not given an acceleration. For the first part of the motion, we were also not given, um, yes, we were not told of an acceleration. If there is an acceleration, then we can calculate the final velocity of the motion, but there is nothing like that. So what it means is that it looks as if this is a constant velocity motion. The initial part of the motion was constant velocity. The body the motorist moved with a velocity of this, five, within this time interval. Then from there, the body accelerates. So if you have to sketch the velocity time graph, within the first two seconds, this velocity, then the time, Within the first two seconds, the motorist moved with a velocity of five meter per second. And so within this time, he moved with this velocity because we were not informed of any acceleration at the first part of the motion. Then the second part, there was an acceleration, okay, of 10 within a time interval of eight. So, uh, sorry, six. So six plus two, this will give us a time of eight seconds. The time and the velocity must always add up. The body accelerates, but listen, at the first part of the motion, the velocity five meter per second was constant. So as at when you go to two seconds and the body accelerates, its initial velocity is five because the velocity is constant. It was when it got to two, then, then, okay, the body begin to change its speed by accelerating. So the initial velocity of the second part of the motion, U must be equal to five. So if the initial velocity of the second part is five, then using V is equal to U plus AT, we can find the final velocity of the second part of the motion, which is five, plus an acceleration of 10 by a time of six. This is giving us 65, a velocity of 65 meter per second. Okay, so we indicate a velocity of 65 
meter per second. So within this time interval from two to eight, body accelerates uniformly and then attain a final velocity of this. The slope is the, is the acceleration, don't forget. Then the final part of the motion, the motor is then decelerate uniformly. Okay, so look at the third part of the motion. When it attained a velocity of this, join the second part, then it be, uh, the board motor is begins to decrease or reduce speed gradually. So it comes to rest. So the initial velocity, the initial velocity of the motor is will be the final velocity of the second part. Please this is the first part, the second part. The, the initial velocity of the third part will be the final velocity of the second part. Okay? So it decelerates, but let's calculate for the deceleration. We have U equal to 65. A is equal to V minus U all on T. Therefore, we have zero minus 65 on four. So minus 65 on four would be the deceleration. So it decelerates uniformly. So the motorist comes to a stop when his final velocity is equal to zero. This is the velocity time graph. Please let me see those of you who had this graph. If you if you got this graph, let me see you. You can raise up your hand. Okay. All right. And that's great. Okay. Let's look at the questions that follow. Let's answer the questions that follow. Is that calculate the maximum velocity attained? Of course, you're not, is your hand up? That is no. Okay, the ma of course, the maximum velocity attained is a, a 65 meter per second. We've calculated it. The total distance traveled. The total distance traveled. Here, since the motion is along the positive positives, total distance equal to, is equal to the total displacement. So let's determine the total distance traveled. The area under the graph and then the time axis becomes, okay, the total distance. So this is a rectangle. This is a trapezium and this is a triangle. So we have three, different areas to calculate. So this is five by two plus half of A. A is five, B is 65, H, H is six plus Half base. I'm coming. This is four, so twelve, right? So the base is four, and the height is sixty-five. So ten plus 
70 by 3. Plus, this is two. 130. So, 140 plus 210. Giving a 0, 0,5, 3. So, this is, the total distance must be 350 meters. How many of you got this? How many of you got a total distance of 350? Mr. Edia, please can you come again? I'm looking at the total distance. Come, come again on the total distance. Yes, please. You see, we have three different areas. One, two, three. The first area is a rectangle. It's, okay, um, area of a rectangle length times breadth. So five by two plus the second area is a trapezium. Half A plus B than the height. A is five. B is 65. The height is eight minus two, which is six. So half five plus this times six. Okay, this is this is 70. This goes into 6, 3. So we have 70 times 3 plus this is a triangle. Area of a triangle, half base times height. Okay, it base is 4. 12 minus 8. So half times 4 times the height, 65. And that's so when you add everything, you have the total distance travel. Are you okay? Please, thank you. Yes, please. Welcome. Then the average velocity. The average velocity. The average velocity of the motorist. Okay. And over here. It isn't only one motion, three parts of motion. So the average velocity, you must use total distance traveled over total time taken, S on T. The total distance traveled is, um, we got what, 350. 350. Divided by 12. And what is 350 divided by 12? Yes, what is 350 divided by 12? 29.17. 29.17 meter per second. For Total distance traveled, we can use the equation of motion. Let's use the equation of motion to determine total distance traveled for first part, second part, and third part. Using S equal to U T plus half A T squared. Since during the first part, the acceleration, the body never accelerated. A is zero. This part will not come in. We got A is zero, zero gradients. So U is five times a time of two. 10 meter is the distance traveled for the first part. Then the second part of the motion. We want to determine total distance. So the same S is equal to UT 
plus half a t squared. This time around, u is five. U is five times t six plus half. The acceleration is ten. The acceleration is ten. So times ten times six squared. So we have thirty plus thirty six times five. Yes, what is thirty six times five? What one hundred and eighty. One a zero. So when you total this, this is two hundred and ten. Then the third part of the motion. The third part of the motion. Here we we'll need the, if we want to use the same thing, the same formula, then we we'll need a deceleration. Because U is 65 times T, T is four. plus half the acceleration here, we need to calculate it. And that is equal to 65, zero minus 65 over, over four. What is 65 divided by four? What is 65 divided by four? 16.25. So minus 16.25 times the time four squared. So multiply 65 by four. Sixty-five by four. Two sixty. Two hundred sixty. So two hundred sixty. Then this is four squared is sixteen. So times sixteen. Two into sixteen eight. Multiply eight by sixteen point two five. 16.25 times 8. 130. 130. 130. When you subtract, 130. you have 130. 130. So, you see, this is giving us the same results as we got. So, what if you want to determine the total time, 130 plus 210 plus 10 would give you the total distance, which is 300. Are you okay? Yes, please. So you can also use the equations of motion to do the same. All right. Uh -huh. Patience. Hey, Paulette, I've been calling you. Yes, please, yes, please, yes, please, yes, please. Connection has not been good today, so I haven't been from the start. Okay. But then, please, the first equation of motion, the one that you did, please, you said you said there was no acceleration, but then why did you cancel everything? Though no, there was t squared. Why? Well, uh, the first here. equation. One you did. Oh, okay, I get you. You see, a a acceleration is zero, but this is. Half times a times t squared, they are multiplying. So once the a is zero, everything goes to zero. Uh, okay, thank you. All right. Okay. Do you have any more questions? All right. So if you don't have any questions, in fact, I'll give you enough work set for the weekend. Okay. 
you enjoy. So expect trial questions for the weekend. Is that okay? So this is where we draw the curtains on today's show. Thanks so much for your your time and then your contribution. Everything. Please go to my page and then subscribe. Okay, comment and then like. Okay, I need that so badly. Do that for me and do not overlook. When you go there, do not jump, subscribe, and then comment and like. It will help my, um, I mean, my mission. <laughs> okay, so next week. Until then, take care of yourselves and bye-bye, okay? Bye. Thank you. Bye. All right. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.